accidentally touched a button that we weren't supposed to touch. Yeah, I'm maneuvering this by myself today. It's all good. We are practicing our social distancing. But there we go. Can you see me? Woo! There I am. Anyway. So the week, today, we start our new message series entitled, Fear Not, When Life Gets Hard. I want to share a little story with you as we get started. A few years ago, I ran a half marathon in Grand Rapids with an organization by the name of World Vision. Now, the reason that I ran in this half marathon, because it was for a good cause that I felt compelled to support. You see, we were raising money for clean water for kids in Africa. What I come to find out was that for $50, for only $50, you could provide clean water for a kid in Africa for life. So I decided to run in this half marathon. Deciding to run in this half marathon meant, though, that I would face some challenges. First challenge that I would face is training. I had to train five days a week, sometimes between an hour and four to five hours of running, stretching, exercising. Other challenges came with physical and mental challenges that I would have to overcome. And there was the money that needed to be raised. I didn't have all the money just to give myself. I had to get out there and ask people to support me in the cause that I was running for. But at the end of the four months, I had the satisfaction of having raised enough money for 36 kids to have clean water for life. I had the satisfaction of being able to finish the half marathon. And I had accomplished something that I had never done before. I simply say that to say this. Life presents us with many challenges. I think it's safe for us to say that we face challenges on a regular basis. But we might just have a, a challenge in, in exercise, working out, staying fit. We may have challenges um, at work, at school. We may have challenges uh, parenting. Parents, is parenting a challenge? I mean, it's a challenge, right? And it's important for us to realize that we can view our challenges from two perspectives. We can view our challenges as problems or we can look at our challenges as opportunities. You see, how we view our challenges says more about us than it does about the challenges that we face. We know from looking at the life of the Apostle Paul that he faced challenge after challenge after challenge. And he constantly risked his life in order to share and spread the gospel of Jesus throughout the world. Today we're going to be taking a look at Acts chapter 27, verse 21 through 26, and look at just a little snippet of Paul's life and some of the challenges that he faced. I encourage you to go back and read maybe the whole chapter of 27 to get a little bit better idea, but I'm going to give you a little bit of a rundown before we get started and read this passage from Acts chapter 27, verse 21 through 26. You see, the Apostle Paul had been imprisoned. He was in chains. The Apostle Paul was being transported from one place to another. He was going to face trial uh, in front of Caesar. And so they were moving him from one place to another. And he was on, on board of a ship uh, with many other people. And they, they had a horrible storm come upon them that Paul told them, we shouldn't sail. But the owner of the ship... And the captain of the ship said, we're going to sail on. And so they did. And that's kind of where we pick up in our story today. So I invite you to join me in Acts chapter 27, verse 21 through 26. This is what the Word of God says. I'm reading from the, the New Living, uh, or the NIV today, starting in verse 21. Here we go. After they had gone a long time without food... Paul stood up before them and said, Men, you should have listened and taken my advice not to sail from Crete. Then you would have spared yourselves this damage and loss. But now I urge you to keep your courage, because not one of you will be lost. Only the ship will be destroyed. <laughs> As if that's good news, right? Last night an angel of God came to me, 
that uh, the God to whom I belong and that I serve. And he said to me, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid, Paul. You must stand trial before Caesar, and God has graciously given you the lives of all who sail with you. So keep up your courage, Paul said to the men. I have faith in God. It will happen just as he told me. Nevertheless, we must run around, run our ship aground into an island. You see, Paul was in a lot of trouble. They were in this horrible nor'easter storm. Their lives were at risk. An angel of God comes to him, says that their lives are going to be spared. You see, from our text today, Paul was presently facing a double challenge. He had the challenge of the sea that was right upon him. And if he actually made it through the shipwreck, he had the challenge that he was going to face Caesar on trial. He had a double challenge. And during this challenge, Paul rose to the occasion, took control of the situation with God's help. I, 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 with God's help, that's an important part. Paul boldly announced that a messenger of God came to him in the middle of the night and revealed that every one of them would be protected from the storm. Paul's challenge gave him the opportunity to witness to those who were on the ship with him. Paul wasn't ashamed, he wasn't embarrassed to talk about the fact of his God and that he served him. Paul's challenge gave him an opportunity to be a witness. Remember, all these things were happening to Paul with the immediate danger of the sea and knowing that Caesar and what Caesar could do to him afterwards. Paul could have looked at the storm as a way of escape, but he didn't. He trusted the messenger of God's word and he approached this with great faith. You see, Paul wasn't looking at his, his challenges as setbacks. Paul was looking at his challenges as God's setups. And I believe that that's important for us today. Let's not look at our challenges as setbacks. But let's positively look at our challenges as a way of God setting up what he wants to do next. When Robin and I first got married, we quickly discovered that we were very different from one another. Robin, she is outgoing, and uh, I'm not so outgoing. I'm a little bit more reserved. Robin is spontaneous, and I am more methodical. Robin is more talkative, and I'm less talkative. In a lot of ways, we're complete opposites from one another. And sometimes that can be a challenge. Uh, it can be a challenge for her to live with me, believe it or not. Our issues, though, our problems uh, are God's way of growing us deeper. Because we have to begin to see things from different perspective, the perspective of each other. Life difficulties seem not to be ideal, but they usually provide keen insight that will help us and give us great value. For example, the entire book of the book of Proverbs uh, is, is a bunch of writings, God-inspired sayings that a man came up with after he experienced some of life's greatest difficulties. Yet Solomon presents us with many of the solutions to life's challenges. You see, when times are good, it's easy. It's easy to become complacent and to forget how creative we could be. We forget about how strong we are and how capable we might be. But it's in times of difficulty that we find strength we didn't know we had. That, that we put our abilities to use and, and, and we come up with creative ideas to get through. Without a doubt, it's easier to run from our challenges. However, running from our challenges 
may cause us to fall short. Don't miss this. It may cause us to fall short of fulfilling our greatest potential in life. Think about it. When we're born, we burst onto the scene as babies, full of confidence, totally carefree, right? Every object is worthy of observation. Every object is worthy to explore and stick in our mouth, by the way. <laughs> Life seems to be one big adventure after another. We're born into a world full of prospects, full of possibilities, and with the potential to achieve incredible things. But somewhere along the way, we enter into adulthood, and our audacious childhood drives begin to wither away. It, it, it's true. Uh, from the very moment that we're born, we're subjected to uh, social conditioning by our parents and teachers and friends and media. We are taught how to fit in and to conform to the expected mold. It, it shouldn't surprise us then that we gradually, over the years, many times begin to lose our self-identity. We struggle to understand who we really are, and we feel incredibly misplaced, lost, if you will. Even more significantly, running from our problems may not be God's will for us. Maybe it just is God's will that we face some challenges. You see, when challenges arise, We'll be tempted to compromise our core values. We'll be uh, tempted to compromise our morals. We'll be tempted to compromise our commitments to God. We'll be tempted to be somebody that we're not. We'll find that it's easier to compromise rather than face the situations that we find ourselves in head on with confidence in the one who fights for us. In Paul's life, there were many points where he could have taken the easier route. He, he could have. Before Paul encountered Jesus, let me just share a little background on Paul. Before Paul encountered Jesus, he was a well-respected well Jewish Pharisee. Paul had no earthly benefit to be a follower of Jesus. He, he really didn't. He, he was set socially. He was set relationally. He was set financially. But in the scope of eternity, in the scope of eternity, he would have been lost. Paul knew that he had encountered the Christ and that he had a mission for him. At any point, Paul could have turned back to his life of ease, but he didn't. Paul chose to stay the course and to fulfill God's purposes. You and I, too, have a choice to stay the course with Jesus or to venture off doing our own thing. Many times when things go wrong and they do go wrong, we assume that it's just not meant to be, that if things are difficult, that it may not be God's will. But, but why do we do that? You see, things aren't always easy. Uh, Good things don't just magically happen. We have to be willing to pursue our dreams and God's purposes with tenacity. Just because things are difficult doesn't mean that it's not God's will. It just means that we have to get to the grind and we have to be committed and we need to stick to it. I hope that you're hearing what I'm saying today. God wants to use tough times to develop our character. When things don't go well, it doesn't mean that we ought to lose hope. <laughs> it means that we ought to dig deep and depend upon God. I hope that you're encouraged this morning to dig deep and to depend upon God. To be sure, there's always going to be something trying to keep us from fulfilling God's will for our lives. Sometimes it's an outside influence. At other times, it's inward fear. And when we fear life's difficulties, 
We may be tempted to live in the past or maybe in the future. However, we need to understand that we were made to exist in the here and now, in the present, for such a time as this. This is uh, the, the thing. We can't live in the past. We can't live in the future. We have to live in the here and now. Time is very misleading. All we ever really have is the present. We can gain experience from the past. We can have great hope for the future. However, we can't relive the past, and we don't really know the full scope of the future. But this is true. This is true. We can ruin today. We can ruin the here and now by focusing on another time in another place. Living in the present matters. Being in the present can be challenging. In today's consumer-driven culture, we find ourselves distracted by multiple diversions that life throws at us on a daily basis. If anybody was an advocate of present living, it was Jesus. A few people in Jesus' day, or in our day, fully understand what Jesus meant by the plea to be present with him at all times. Jesus says, be present with me at all times. As we learn to live in the here, in the now, we can't help but be, to begin to be grateful, to have a grateful heart. Present living presents us with a gift, and that gift is the ability to endure hardship or difficulty with a hope-filled attitude. I have hope today. I, I don't have hope in my abilities. I don't have hope. Uh, and maybe people around me, but I have hope in my God. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 16 through 18 says this, Rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Let me say it again. Rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will will for you in Christ Jesus. Psalm 34 1 in the Old Testament it says, I will praise you. I will praise the Lord at all times. I will constantly speak his praises. How is that possible? How is it possible to be thankful all the time? I'm glad that you asked. <laughs> in the midst of painful situations, we may feel like our lives have been shattered in a million pieces. And it's important for us to know that God is instructing us to be, not to be thankful for difficult circumstances, but to be thankful in difficult circumstances. There is a difference. And when we're thankful in difficult times, our attitude says to God, I trust you. You've got this. I know that everything's going to be all right. I know that we're going to get through this. God is going to make a way, some way, somehow. And when it's all said and done, God is going to get the glory. You see, when life gets hard, we will at times be tempted to cramp up in fear. Life is full of twists and turns, and sometimes hard times just fall upon us. But no matter what our circumstances, <laughs> we can rest in the fact that God is faithful, that God is good, that God is in control, that God never changes. He said to Paul, do not be afraid. And God says to us, do not be afraid. Trust in me. Turn to me. Pour yourself out to me. I love you. I'm going to take care of you. Everything's going to be all right. That's our message today. Do not fear. When things get hard, 
when life gets difficult, God is going to take care of everything. I just want to let you all know that I love you, that I miss you. I can't wait for the, for the day when we get back together and we see each other face to face. But until then, know that God is with you, that God is with me. We're gathering together. It may not be in person, but we're gathering together in mind. Our hearts and our spirits are together. And wherever two or three are gathered, he is with them. Let me pray for us. Father God, I want to thank you for who you are. I want to thank you that in the midst of whatever circumstances we find ourselves in, we can entrust our life to you and know that we're going to be okay. Father, I pray that we might take time today to just be still and to be silent and allow you to speak to us. Father, I pray that you would dispel the fear and that you would replace it with peace and hope. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. I hope that you won't go anywhere quite yet. I just want to say goodbye and also give you the opportunity to just one more time see uh, the opportunity that you have to be able to give. Remind you that you can give online at give ghnaz.org or you can mail your tithes and offerings into our address there. I hope that you all have a fantastic week. Uh, we will be online tonight at 7 o'clock with our scripture reading and continue with that. Take care everybody. We love you. God bless.